The journey back to 1944 begins here at London's Bomber Command Memorial that honours the 55,000 aircrew who died in raids over Nazi-occupied Europe. Dennis Kelly missed the memorial's official opening in 2012 because of a broken hip, but nothing would stop him and his son from making this very personal journey. The loss is, in fact, growing worse as I grow older because I think of all the things that I've been able to do that they could. It's a very poignant feeling when I, when I think about an em empty feeling. At the RAF Museum in North London, Dennis Kelly is reunited with a big old friend. 463, 467, Royal mm. Australian Air Force. Yes, yeah. Dennis Kelly um, flew a mission in this very Lancaster S for sugar. Stand there and look down, <laughs> then dive, you know. But his memories are drawn back to 2 a.m. July 1944, returning from his 30th and final bombing mission over France. A German night fighter attacked, the rear gunner was killed, the pilot also died. Dennis Kelly and the others had to bail out or die too. And I was flying, I looked out at 21,000 feet into deep dark. <laughs> and if it hadn't have been a fire, I don't think I would have jumped, but I didn't have much alternative. Badly injured after a hard landing and unable to move, Dennis Kelly told two surviving crew members to leave him and try and escape the German patrols. Left lying in a ditch, he thought this was the end, but his war was not over yet. So you would have been hidden somewhere up there? Up there, in, one of, those, in uh, one of the bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. Dennis Kelly says he owes his life to the brave French villagers who hid him in this building, the Golden Anchor and then took him across a canal and kept him for weeks in a nearby lockkeeper's house. Was it this bridge wasn't guarded? Yes, it was. Okay. It two John, John arms each end, and when I was coming down on the bike with my legs hanging up, the gendarmes at each end turned their backs, so they weren't looking. And they took me down into Victor's and put me into Victor's place. And that's where the doctor came to see the lockkeeper and his wife looked after him, and Colette, the daughter of the owners of the nearby Golden Anchor, visited him every day. And he says her conversation, in a language he didn't understand, nonetheless saved his sanity. What would have happened to the French people that helped you along the way if they'd been found out by the... They would have been shot. Not only them, their family would have been shot. Too. Right here, right, this yeah. family here. Yes, yeah. family here. and. Colette's family too. So it was an extraordinary risk they, they, they ran. Absolutely, and that's, what, that's one of the reasons why uh, I'm here to say thank you. You know, you saved my life. For 60 years, all this was kept bottled up. Dennis Senior told the family very little, but gradually Dennis Junior encouraged his father to open up. This is obviously a very emotional day and yeah. moment for your father, but for you too. I'm trying to think, 70 years ago, Dad's hiding over there behind a small door, and there's no outside, there's a war going on, and he's talking to locals who, if they say the wrong word at the wrong time to the wrong person, he's gone. And that, to me, gives me goosebumps. Um, and to be here is just... I mean, it's unbelievable. It's, it's just marvellous to be back, to see all you people. Only wish I could communicate better with you. <laughs> the village of Pane Sesulu has turned out to honour the man who had returned from far away Australia and has a surprise. Oh, man. Voilà, je suis la petite fille. Colette, who saw him every day as he hid in the lockkeeper's house, has passed away but her daughter was here. Colette was somebody who used to come into the little room I was hidden in. We would talk for hours. I didn't understand her, she didn't understand me, but the companionship was, you know, made me feel 
water. Oui, uh, it was not... Il ne comprenait pas, mais uh, mm -hmm. il y avait quand même de uh, uh, l'entrée. Oui, uh, she bought the like, toothbrush and toothpaste, yeah. And uh, to clean my teeth. I remember that, yeah. But there were more than just memories here. In the village cemetery lie the graves of fallen French soldiers. And one other. Colin Allen was the rear gunner in Dennis Kelly's stricken Lancaster. He was killed in the first burst of fire from the German fighter. You may not be able to hear me, but I'm sure you're looking down and saying, ah, oh, Ned's come back. After all these years, again, to see me, I wonder why not me, why them? Uh, but there's no answer to that. It's a very emotional time for me and it's lovely to see all you people here. Uh, I just didn't ever imagine it would be like this and uh, I can only say thank you, God willing, thank you. Uh, santé. <laughs> bon, son, bon santé. Inside the town hall, celebrations for an adopted son returned after seven decades. There is an exchange of gifts, a medallion from the village, yes. and in return, an Australian flag. It's been an extraordinary day, retracing old steps, reliving past sorrows, the demons of bad dreams and survivor guilt driven away by the warmth of an extraordinary welcome. But this is just the start. Welcome. <laughs> So proud and so happy to Thank meet you, you today. Day two and the nearby village of Alice Le Merou has its own welcome. Dennis Kelly spent his 21st birthday here. Incredibly, there's even a photo of that day, but he's the only survivor. Or is he? <laughs> we are the only survivors, plus my sister. Monique Gionnet was at that surprise birthday, seen here on the far left, Dennis Kelly on the far right. At great risk, he was smuggled into the village for the celebration. What does it mean to you to be, for Dennis to be here today? A lot of, a lot of moving and a lot of crying in the eyes. Oui. Beaucoup de souvenirs. A lot of tears. Pour mon père, pour Monsieur et Madame Ouzou qui nous ont reçus exceptionnellement parce que c'était trop dangereux de nous recevoir parce que euh, ces deux camarades. De, de qui sont much emotion, much emotion, a lot of tears for the people who looked after them, Mr. and Mrs. Asouf, because his two comrades also landed in the area. They let them out for fresh air at night. There were many of us in the family with six children, so you can see it was risky, especially for my father, and for that I pay homage to him. This is even the most touching moment I've had up to date because here is a contact with somebody that I was in contact with. Sometimes some people look at the photo and they don't understand the tragedy of the situation. They managed to smile, they had a few drinks. He was turning 21. He's taken to the house where he celebrated his birthday with champagne and a swim in the duck pond. Moment shared with his two crewmen he hadn't seen since being left for dead after the crash. Quite a place to uh, celebrate your 21st. Isn't it ever, yeah. And, and of course we'd, we'd been all wondering where we were and how we were. And, and this is the first time we met as a crew since they walked away uh, from when I was dropped. And you couldn't have imagined that 70 years later you'd be back. No, I couldn't imagine I was going to meet them. I was, you know, I nearly cried with joy. And they were happy to see me because they didn't have to take a message back to my wife, you know. In the village hall, another ceremony and a special gift, a crumpled piece of his crashed Lancaster. That shows you how hard we hit the ground. And another surprise, this is the very escape map carried by one of Dennis Kelly's surviving crew members. 
God bless France and yes. God bless yes. Australia. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Merci. Uh, thanks to you, Mr. Kelly. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Across the road, another of the crew of the Lancaster who will never leave the village. The pilot, Tom Davis, bailed from the stricken aircraft but was strangled by his communications cable. It's almost too much to bear. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. I'm sorry you didn't make it, mate. I'm sure you're in good hands now. And I honour and remember you and you are being honoured and remembered by the people of this village who were very close to our problem. I bless all of you for coming here today in, in memory of my comrade, but also a very important agenda on my plate today is to say thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been 70 years in the making. The burden of survival weighs a little lighter on the heart. The care of strangers, great comfort. Mates have been honoured, the heartfelt thanks heard. One man's war may finally be over.